Okay, so here's where we are um, since we last met. The cover is almost done and the only thing I did that you didn't see is I sprayed the whole thing, spine, everything, with a little of this uh, matte clear and that'll just help it um, resist water. You know, this again, this was just an inkjet print. And of course, I my printer uses a dye ink um, as part of it. It's a Canon craft printer. So it doesn't tend to run at all anyway, but it's never a bad thing. And certainly if you're using a pigment-based dye, like most dye, uh, ink rather, in your printer, then giving it a shot of this before getting too handily with it is a good idea. And it dries really fast. So now we are at the point that we have to make some decisions. And if you had chosen to do this project, which you can, with just a gutted book, um, like so, we are now at this point. The difference being this has been placed in, whereas this is not here yet. Um, and so that's where we are. So you could make your own. And in this case, I wanted to make my own because I wanted it a little bit larger in size so that it could hold some letters and other notebooks. So the things we need to decide now are, oh, let me back up. Also, of course, you could just use this as a book cover, as a regular journal cover. And maybe you wouldn't have put in um, this strip yet be because you might have put, you know, signatures in. Let me show you. Right? So this, I mean, this one has a rounded spine, but that's irrelevant. This really is just this, this, this um, binding. And you could have your sewn in signatures into this book, just like this book. But like I said, at that point, you might not have put this in. You could. You could now put your sewn signatures over there and then your, you know, over this section and then your end paper. So it's just something to think about that the method is exactly the same. So now we need to decide what's going where and who's going to be, how we're going to close it and what kind of plates are going on. Now, if you were around last night and this morning, I posted on YouTube a poll, which should be the cover because I couldn't decide, should it be this or should it be this? Now, I prefer this and my husband preferred this a lot, but that's not surprising. My husband and I share typically the same philosophies, but not necessarily the same taste in art. So he wanted this one and I wanted this one. And so we decided to put it out to the YouTube community and it was close. So it shows you that we both have either really good taste or really bad taste, but um, it, was, it stayed very close the whole time. But my selection, my preference did come out the winner by this morning, 1022, um, when I decided, okay, it's time to go finish up the video. So happily, I'll make this the cover and this will be the back. This bolder, brighter area will be the back. So. Knowing that, I want to do a couple of things. I do want to put a plate here, and I want to do that before I put the end papers in. Now, if you were going to put one here, I don't know why I keep banging into that thing, then you might have done it. I would have recommended you to have done it before putting in the interior spine cover because then you could cover it and hide the, the brads. But I knew I wasn't doing that, so I just went ahead and, and um, covered that because I'm, I knew I was gonna do it on the cover, a face plate. So we have to sort of decide where it's going. And I think it's kind of hard to say. Let me close it up and see, it might help me visualize more. Yeah, we'll cover that up too and then it'll look like it goes straight up through. So I want this to be straight. So I'm going to grab my little, little ruler that allows me to get a reasonably straight edge. You know, it's plastic, so it's not that um, precise, but it, it works. It does a good job. And I also want to center it between here and here. So that I'm going to just eyeball. I think, I think there will be nice. Yes, yes, okay. So we wanna do this now before we go a lot farther. Um, and let's just mark where the holes need to go. Okay, there's our holes. And for this, our happy little 
croca crocodile croca chomper thing and we're going to go with the smaller hole there we go and line it up with our dot now there's a bunch of dots here which one is the, the one i want okay there let me just double check because i really don't want to put holes in here where they're not wanted okay i should have used red or something but i'm going to now line this up with i have to put this back with my chop my hole punch here and i never seem to be able to get it exactly there's probably a method i'm just going to chop it there's one now I'm just going to, again, double check. Yes, that's where I want my other one. Put that in here. And line it up as best I can. And put the hole in. And I'm going to make sure my slot is up. And get my little brads, which were just floating around here, and just put those through. Could use glue on this. I don't think I need to. I have my little brads. And that way, should I ever change my mind and re redo the book in some way, I can always take that off. So let me do one at a time. So I could use both hands. To hold it in. I'm going to hold it pretty tightly and then just bend the prongs back. Okay, number two done. Easy. Ah. Okay, less easy. There we go. Put that in and bend that in. Now, I normally in any book that has these guys, I will stick a little at least washi tape over it um, or any kind of art tape. There we go, just a little tape over there. And that will help it from ever poking through the end papers, which I've never had it do, but one can't be too careful. And now it won't come out. There, okay. So then when we put the end paper on, which in my case is going to be this, that will cover that up. It's all good. All right, so now we still have more decisions to make. We have to choose the closure, okay? So for me, that looks straight. Oh, it's such a, there we go. For me, um, I have an idea of what, oh, coming back, of what I want to do, but I want to show you some options. All right, simply, we could just run, over. we could just run a um, ribbon right back here. Now, I wouldn't let it go all the way on this one because um, it'll show when you open it. So I would cut it to you know, somewhere around here and that will be covered by the end papers. So that's a possibility. Um, that's actually um, seam binding. And here it is, the same seam binding, but I wet it and scrunched it up so it had this really fun texture. So same thing, stretch it out here. Again, just glue it maybe from here to here and even perhaps put a little piece of tape. Again, similar to this, just to keep it from ripping back as you, um, as you use it to close it. Another option would be something like this which is to, <clears throat> excuse me, put a grommeted hole here and run some elastic through it as this box shows. And that's definitely a possibility. I make obviously a lot like that. There's that kind of box. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on with my throat. Same thing as here, same thing. Very easy to do. That's a possibility. I can show you how to do that, but we're not doing that today. What we're doing is a magnet, a magnet similar to this. So this is a box I made for a friend um, with 
eco prints of uh, foliage from property she's conserved. So and I made her some note cards and envelopes and a little box um, for her to hold it in. And this you can see was an actual a book that I used. So that's what we're doing. This other one is a different method. This, this is what we're doing today. There's a magnet right here, a washer here, close it up. It stays closed. So another way is this method where I put the magnet, up, 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 those are passwords. <laughs> this is my husband's pass, password book that I made him because I could never find his passwords and neither could he. So for this one, there's a magnet in the side and then there's this little dangle and it happens that the ribbon end that I used is magnetic, you know, is a metal that will hook, hook to magnets. And then put these back in. That's his little password stuff. So this is the one we're mimicking for this. Um, this was a larger book and this holds um, mail that my uh, particular cousin has sent me so she gets her own little book because we tend to exchange some a good amount of mail and I chose this not for its design but it was a good size it would allow me to hold um, larger envelopes which is why I made this book this way so the books that I'm expecting to store in here are a little bit smaller that didn't need to be this large, but I want to know that I can also store other things in other envelopes. So now we're gonna begin thinking about the box, the closure, and finishing this baby up. So I'm going to use what I've used for all those books you saw, and it's this hardboard. It's like quarter inch masonite. And it's super hard. Um, it doesn't warp. It takes glue. It takes covering really well. Um, and I prefer it. Now, that said, you can also use foam core. And you know what foam core is. I'll get a piece here. Foam core, the usual stuff with the foam in it, hence the name. So, what's good about this is it's super easy to cut and it's light and easily readily available, and you don't need a power tool to cut it. I, on the other hand, prefer this for its stability, and it's very sturdy, and it gives a little weight to the book itself so that the box feels more like a book because it has some, some weight to it. Um, I happen to have a table saw available, so it was pretty easy for me to cut them. So now you can choose and you could do the same method with the foam core. So don't, don't fret, it's doable. So the first thing we need to do is decide where the magnet goes. Now the magnet I'm using is this. And I only have one left after this. And I think I got these at Michael's, I'm not sure, but they're Pro Mag and they are super strong. So let me see, I have mine clipped to my can over there. This is the little magnet. We're gonna use it with a washer. And you can see I don't even have to go to it and, the, and the, it will pick up the, the washer. So it's strong enough to go through a few layers of paper. So for this one, like the other large one, I wanna put the magnet kind of just in the center. Okay, so I'm gonna mark where it's gonna go. Let me get this ruler and a pencil. So this is nine and a half. So four and three quarters. This will be the center. I'm going to put that there. Then I'm going to mark on here where that goes. I mean, where the you know the center of the magnet. Okay, and then this way, just so I know where my edges are. And it doesn't have to be precise, and you want it deep enough to hold the magnet. So somewhere about there. You'll test it along the way, but it's good to have a guide. 
So I hope you're all well and good. It's a beautiful day here. I really do want to get outside. We'll see if that happens. Okay. Now, how do you cut it out? Well, if I were doing this alone and had to take no one else into consideration, I would just throw it on the table saw and do a couple of quick zzz, zzz cuts on it. You know, zzz, 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 and I'd be done. But I want to show you how you can do it if you don't have a table saw. And it's simply using a utility knife. And basically, you simply wiggle it down on both sides. Just keep wiggling, wiggling, wiggling. And you will get it cut, I promise you. This is it, that's all you do. So now you do want to be careful of the blade. Um, I have done these with chisels and you know first cutting it with the blade a little bit and then chiseling it out. I've tried it with saws. Oh, I feel like I just broke that. Yeah, I did. I broke the tip of this, but that's okay. Um, you can see there it's already coming out. It's half out already. Uh, what, what I was saying was I've tried it with little saws and chisels and this is really the easiest way to do it. And it only takes a minute and only a little strength. I mean, you just take it slow and steady. You don't have to strong arm it too much. Yeah, I'm going to clip this um, blade, I think, so I can get it a little bit sharper because I've been using this one a lot. There we go. All right, it's pretty much done. That might be it. Again, it doesn't have to be sexy. It just has to take the magnet. Let's see. And I look at it. Okay, my, I have a corner that's got to be sharp, sharpened up a little bit. That should do it. And the only thing is there. Beautiful. You want to make sure that it's flat, which this one is. You can see it sits right in that little hole. Now, what I do do is I add glue and a little tape because, again, you don't want that coming off. So any glue you want, you can use here. I mean, I say any glue, any glue that will hold a magnet. Um, I find the Tim Holtz collage paste works really well for this because it um, it's, it's such a strong bond, but we're just going to use a little Fabrifix. And once the tape is on it and then the whole thing's wrapped in paper, you'll see it's in there. So let's get a good glop of glue in there. And let that dry. Okay. So that needs to dry. It's perfectly straight and flat. That makes me happy because I don't want it to stick out. You do want it centered so it doesn't stick out on either side. That's why these are the perfect magnets for this application. So now we're going to get ready to wrap all the, all the sides of the box and get them assembled. So let's go get ready to do that. I'm going to clean up this stuff for a second. Hi friends. Well, as it would happen, the battery on my microphone died um, during one of the sections and I didn't notice it while I was doing the tutorial. So I'm going to overdub what I'm doing and hopefully that'll be um, sufficient. And I think it will be because it has to be. So essentially I'm starting with the putting the sides together. You know, we've, we've already put the magnet into one side and I'm showing you now, or I'm about to show you how to cover each of these. I'll also work within this video, this part of the video, um, let you know how to measure and cut the, to length the, the sides of the box. What I'm doing now is I'm adding tape, just regular artist tape. You could use uh, masking tape, gaffer's tape, anything. Just something to keep that magnet down. It's, um, these magnets are really strong and if asked, um, by another piece of metal, um, it'll, it could try and pull out um, 
of the of the little nook that it's in, even though it's glued. So then I'm showing you here um, the printouts that I have for um, the, the particular kit that I use to make this book box. And I'm choosing the sides, the sheets that I'm going to use to cover all of the sides of the box. And then the two of the sheets will be for that. And then the other two will be for making the end papers of the actual book. So basically, um, the thing to consider is that when you glue paper on this way, one side is going to be upside down. Now, in, in the case of the print I'm using, um, it doesn't matter. There's really no up or down. But if you were using writing, for example, um, you'd want to make sure that you knew which side of the um, box side was going to face out and which was facing in and which would be right side up writing and upside down writing. Um, nobody really notices it, so it's not a big deal. So I just know that I'm going to need basically half a sheet um, to cover each of the long sides of the book box. And that's what I'm doing now. And I'm being a little finicky about getting it lined up because I, I don't know why it doesn't really matter. I'm trimming half of it off on each side. But, you know, Christine, she gets her mind set on something and it has to be just so. So basically, I am cutting this sheet of paper in half. So I'll maybe I'll fast forward through this part and you'll just see me cut the paper in half. All right, so now we've got two sheets of paper, one big enough on each side, or one piece on each to cover the long sides of the box structure. And I will begin explaining exactly what I do. I think I'm trying to get out of my own way. I'm adjusting here. Okay, so we first, Fabri-Tac, Fabri-Fix, 3-in-1, whatever glue you like, we put it on one side of, of the uh, box side. And you do want to get it close to the edge um, so that it has a good solid um, bond between them so it's not fraying or lifting up at any point. Now you want to align it with the bottom edge, the straightest edge of the paper. And I'll do that and line it up. That's pretty simple. And there I am getting all fussy about it because that's my way. And once it's aligned, I'm going to flip it and uh, burnish it with the bone folder. And it's going to move and then I'll have to put it back, but that's okay, it does that. All right, part one. Now we have to deal with the flaps on the sides. We want to wrap around the edges, the short edges of the box side. So what I first do is simply just short of the box side itself, a hair away, I slice straight across. And then I come in and even a little bit more away, slice again to create sort of a little dart so that it won't box up um, on the top edge. Um, you don't want it to see, you would see it otherwise from the top if we just left it straight across and let it be glued underneath the top edge. You'll see what I mean. I really wish this hadn't happened. I'm sure you do too. But so now I've got my two darts and I'm going to glue the two side flaps and that, these will cover the short side of the box section and I fold it tightly, fold it tightly, let all the glue ooze out because I always use too much. <laughs> and I will get better at it. I was better at it in the spring, but the projects I've been involved with in the summer didn't include glue. So I've gotten back to my old bad habits. So I do the same thing on the other side. You wanna make sure to get it along that one edge um, so that there's a good tight bond there and you get a nice square corner. And there I go, too much glue again, but it's all good. And rub <laughs> when it's not stuck to your hand. So it's always important to me to that these corners be as square as possible. Um, you know, you could be a little bit more loose with it. It's, it's your thing, you know. You might not be as particular as me or you might be particular about other things. So once that's done, now it's simply a matter of getting glue all over this um, facing side and I don't, I'm, well, I'm not, 
who knows what I'm saying at that moment, but basically it's glue it up and make sure you run a good bead of glue along the um, exposed edge or the unexposed edge um, because you want that bound really well. And then across the area I'm doing now so that the top of the um, side is nice and tight and well stuck. All right, now I'm like wedging it in and I'll get the bone folder to really make it a nice tight fit. So it's basically creasing the paper a little bit. So when I fold it over, which I'm doing now, um, it's nice and tight and there's not a lot, lot of loose paper at the top of the side. All right, and then it's a matter of a little bone folder love just to get everything happy. And there you go. So by doing that edge, I get a nice crisp edge um, and it just makes for a better look. So now you have to trim off the excess and it's most easily done this way, which is simply hold it on its side and run the knife along the paper and you'll see it. And there's one. And then you wanna pull it back down if you need to, because sometimes it does move with, with this glue. So I'm going to pick that back up, put it on its edge and trim it just to the short edge. And now I'm gonna trim it all the way and take it right off. And my knife wasn't quite as sharp as it should have been, or it was glue covered and pull that off. And now just run the knife right down the edge of the piece itself to trim off that excess. So that's basically how it's done with a sharper knife, but there you have it. So now I have to go back and trim off that little hickey of paper. There we go. So there's side number one, and that's the side with the magnet. And you always want to know which is the side with the magnet. So at some point, hopefully soon, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And that's simply to put the washer on it um, because that side must go on the outside of the box when you're constructing it. So now I'm just fussing, as I'm known to do, with edges and seams, and we're done. All right, so we're just gonna do that very same thing again. So I'm going to talk you through it once more, and then we'll speed things up, which will be a lifesaver. You don't have to listen to me, and I don't have to tell you what I'm doing. <laughs> but glue on one side, very simple. And you do wanna get it to the edge. Find a straight edge. And again, if you had a pattern that mattered, you'd wanna check for which way is it going. So we've got one side going, a lot of table shake. It's funny to look at the videos this way. All right, so now what we're going to trim straight from just about the edge of the uh, hardwood or hardboard, and then make a little dart. Really, it's just for um, a, a better finished look. You don't have to do this. You could just slice it once and fold it over. And a lot of people would probably do that and it's fine too. But this way it just pulls that extra piece of paper down from the top a little bit so you wouldn't have any unsightly lumps. And the same old bend and fold and then wipe away the excess glue. I don't know if it's here where I talk about the idea of the printed papers. I have a, a Canon Crafters printer, so it prints with a dye ink, um, and that dye ink does not react to glue. So I can do pretty much anything to it, and it's not going to smear off. If you're using a pigmented ink printer, um, like your standard color office printer, you know, inkjet, then it's not a bad idea to first, before even getting to this part, um, give that paper a good spray with a sealer because then it should not react to glue. Um, and most of them don't, but I know some do. And, and if you're um, unlucky enough to have one that does, that's an easy fix. You just spray the printed design, the printed side with a sealer, let it dry, it dries in minutes. And that would just help alleviate the problem of glue seeping through or smearing. So now the same thing, going along 
the what will be the folded edge and then gluing up the whole piece now i'm not sure why i'm doing oh because i was trying to get the, a good crisp fold but then i still have to go back and add glue so it came undone I was gonna try and do it while up and it's like that's silly just put it down you've got the fold in place it'll fold where you told it to let me turn off the AC mm -hmm. we don't need more noise all right glue 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 still too much um, although that's not really true but that's a good amount of glue you want the paper to really stick and I don't know what I was telling you about the little guys, except that I will describe how to measure for your sides um, because they would be different depending on the, the size of your book. All right, so I think you get the main idea. Now this part's important. You just go to, along the short edge with the knife. Sorry that you can't see it on the second one. And then go on the long edge and take it off with a better knife. Okay, same there. Yep. I'm gonna double check that I have it sliced off. I'm just riding it right along the edge. There we go. And then finally, again, the last piece. And there it is, side number two. And I'm just checking for square things and corners. And it's all good. It's pretty. And now I'll give it a little back rub with the bone folder, crisp up that edge. I really like that to be a good solid straight edge on the top of the box. And there's two. I'm checking for the edges. Again, sometimes you have to press down on the, the very corners where the papers meet. Okay. So now I do the small ones and they're done exactly the same way. Okay, so when it comes to measuring for how long your sides and tops and bottoms of your book box part should be, basically, if you're using a pre-made pre book, then you just, if you're smart, you measure the text block before you got the book. Um, if not, you simply have to put the book together. I'm showing you here how the one that I'm using, it's a little, a little wider, but you want to know what's the optimal width for the height for your um, box walls based on the book you're using and that you just measure and once you've measured that then you have to figure out okay so it's going to be like an inch and a half high so at that point you have to know well how long is it be going to be the box itself and how wide so i'm showing you on this book um, the book that i designed which was a little bit bigger than a typical book um, it was about i think uh, one and three quarter um, is my, I think that's the width. I'll, I'll double check that and put it on when I do the edit. Um, so I knew that it had to be that, that height. And then it's simply a matter of measuring the book for the length and the width. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm saying, okay, so I've got this book. Now let's pretend I don't have these yet, but all you do is you measure with the ruler all right, so my book is nine and five eighths, let's say. So I want it a quarter inch. I want each rail, my box, to be a quarter inch um, shorter. So I get at least an eighth inch reveal on each side. And it's sort of a, a guess because you, you need to kind of fudge it a little bit. But you kind of know, based on the cover you're using, what sides you need. So then the smaller parts, the... Uh, tops and bottoms, they sit inside 
the wider, um, the longer, sorry, uh, rails. So if you know that you want a box that's going to be, you know, nine by six, then you have to deduct a half inch from the smaller sides because the rails are a quarter inch and there are two of them and that will make that piece fit inside the two longer rails. So I think that makes sense. Um, it's just basic box construction. So now I need to put in the end papers and I need to make sure that certainly for the, the right side of the book that the end paper is down because I'm going to put the box on top of it. And before I do the part on the right side, I need to know where that washer goes. So I'm waiting to see, do I, did I get to that part yet or not? Okay, I think I'm, do, I'm doing the washer placement. So the one thing to consider with the washer placement is it's a little bit inside the box. Um, there's still plenty of grab for it, but if you put it too far outside on the, the top cover, the inside front cover, um, you won't be able to cover it with the end paper and you wanna make sure it's hidden. So where did I go? I'm going to glue something. Oh, I'm going to glue the end papers. I could tell because I had a sheet of waste paper. So basically just glue it up, keeping in mind to get a lot of glue at the edge, but not so much that it oozes out over everything. And then once you have enough glue, simply lay it down and just line it up by eye. Um, you know, you've already made your choice in terms of how big it is and it should fit just fine. So here's where I could have, and you can, um, trimmed it a little bit more and let the end paper on this side sit inside or underneath the box sides, the uh, box compartment, because I had enough fold over paper on the cover itself that it would have been, the, the, you know, the boards would have been covered but I did it in a more traditional way. So this is how you would traditionally cover the back of a um, book cover. So then of course you have to press it down to get it nicely stuck. And then I just think I'm doing a little test here. Like, okay, how's that gonna look? And I'm thinking it's good. But now I wind up, I have to move it in a little bit because again, I, that washer where it is would be almost sticking out of the side of the book. So I'm just lining up the paper, making sure that it's straight. It's not a big deal. Okay. So here I'm showing just how far out that washer is. I'm taking a look and reminding you that we want to cheat it in, inward a little bit because we don't want it sticking out. Okay, so I think we got it good there. I'm saying something brilliant now. Doing another test fit, I'm not quite sure why, but I am. Or maybe I'm just putting them up so I feel like it's being held in place. Okay, so I just realized the whole time that my microphone was not on, so I'm going to have to dub it, which is not pleasant, but I will. So basically what I'm talking about is getting this lined up, which means my whole last section, which was much longer, was also not on. But you know, technology happens. So I'm just looking at this to make sure I like where it is centered in the box so that when it closes, it closes well, and it does. So there we go. So now we can begin gluing. So I could, I wanna make sure that everything is going to fit and be reasonably square. This is where it gets a little, a little tricky.
looks good. So, first things first, let's get this baby on. And it's just glue, big surprise. Yeah, I'm really bummed that all of that chatter about the process for that last section, I'm going to have to tell you how to do it again. But who knows, maybe I'll tell you better. Right, we're gonna, we're gonna go with that. Let me get the glue off here. And now I've glued it about where I think it should be. And now my concern is just making sure that it's straight along this edge. Um, that from, one, from the top of the book to the bottom, it looks reasonably straight. And that it's um, centered pretty well top to bottom you know, from each, each of those measurements. So now we put on the tops and bottoms. And that we do the same way with a little glue. Okay, and we can also put a little glue on the edge because it's going to be tucked in right here. So there we go. And we want it straight. So we're going to use this corner to help us. And you can just eyeball it. It's not critical. It comes out straight in the end. And that's all that really matters, right? But you want to make sure that it's aligned like so. And if you've got excess glue, you can go ahead and get it off. And then do the bottom one. Same thing. Bead of glue on the bottom. Bead of glue on this edge. I could go get another corner, but we're just going to do this. So here it is. This corner now. And you do want it to go right to the edge of your box, like so, and press it down, and then this guy should fit right there, as it does, and it's beautiful. And you do want to keep it tight against the box, and if you have to push it up a little bit. You'll know that as you put it together and there's still plenty of play in the whole box, which is a good and bad thing, but it does give you time to adjust. So let's get this last one on. So we know we want some glue on here and here and the bottom of this. Oh, come out. That's attractive. Okay. Here we go. Down it goes. It's a beautiful thing. Kick out that. Whoops. Kick out that side. Sometimes there's a little difference in how the saw blade curved. You know, if, if one side was actually done one way and one the other, you want them straight. and press. And then check the bottoms. Make sure that it's also straight. And press. And press. And press. So now, it's just a matter of putting some weight on it. You could clamp it if you want. It's really not necessary once it's stuck together. It's pretty much stuck together. But you do give it a little time to dry. And you want to make sure your book closes. And it does. And it's lovely. And of course, it's, it's up high here on this one. There. All right. It's a beautiful thing. One lovely large book box. We still have to put this on. So, what I do put this on is I'll use a piece of tape. Let me just make sure I'm not moving my book box around too much. 
and then it all remains straight. Okay, so I'm going to use it, I'm going to put this here, and you need it to go inside a little bit into here, so you don't want it hanging off the edge. And you're going to close your book like so, and just eyeball it. Um, but I'm going to use tape, 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 tape. And this will help you. Ah. Here we go. Like so. The magnet will find it. You want to encourage more of it to be on the inside than the out. Like so. Now you want to what I'm doing is I'm looking and making sure that my book is straight, that my binding is straight, as it is. Okay. Oh, I should have put the tape coming out. Dummy. Do that again. I'm really just thinking about having to redub that whole other section. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, it's okay. It's okay. All right, so now I can hold the tape and I know exactly where I want that guy to be. I take the tape off the cover, but I can do this now. And I see it there. And I'm going to add a little glue. I'm actually gonna put tape back on it just like I did on these. This helps me just Kind of roll it back, get some glue in there, give it a few seconds to do its thing. I can take, oh, I can't take that tape off yet. It is not, it is not stuck yet. I know that's where I want it. So there it goes. Oh, that piece was too small. There we go. So that should ensure it never comes up. Let's close up the glue. Oh no, we need to, <laughs> we can't close the glue. We need the glue. All right, so then this will go here, covers our washer, and we're done. So let me move that out of the way. Use this. Now we'll cover the glue. Okay. And now it's just a matter of gluing it down. Perfect, perfect. Okay, and you want to make sure that you've got glue over that. And it looks like I could use a little more glue right there. So what I'm going to do in that section is use skinny glue. And just stick it right in here. To make sure that that edge is nicely sealed. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, there you go, ladies and gents. I hope I do an okay job dubbing that, that whole section about wrapping and measuring. Give this a second. Let's make sure it's up to the edge so that it's nicely sealed. Look at that. The box is perfectly sealed. And it will stay closed and beautiful. And life is good. 
So now, wait to see what I put in here. But there you have it. Great. And it looks like a regular old book when it sticks, sits on the shelf. Now, of course, you can decorate the spine. Um, I, I'm going to think about it. Maybe I will. I, I didn't want to put another plate on it, but I could put something else. I could lose something else here. Um, or I could just leave it and be a beautiful box because that's what it is, a beautiful box. There you go. So I hope you thought this was worthwhile and it gives you ideas for other things you can do with your own materials. Um, this is a kit. So or the papers are um, so that if you wanted to make this design, it's easy enough to do. And also, of course, use it for all sorts of other things, um, the papers. Thanks again. See you next time.